This is the M2 MacBook Air. I've had it for about a week now, so here are my thoughts. Here it is, the M2 MacBook Air. And if you guys can't tell on camera, this is the midnight one, which is probably my favorite color out of the new lineup. And as you can see on the box, Apple is showcasing how thin this computer is. I got to check it out at the Apple event, but I'm so excited to spend more time with it. So let's open it up together. Just wow, look at that. It's so thin, so clean. And I think the reason I really just love this color so much because it almost looks like a pure black. I kind of wish that it didn't have any blue tint in it, but it is just so sleek looking. I, yeah, I love this. Let's put it aside for a second, see everything else. The matching cable that we get here. Love that, love the attention to detail. It's that braided cable, it's also MagSafe now. We love the MagSafe life. Won't be tripping over our computer cables anymore. Here's our instructions. Manual. Ooh, matching midnight stickers. Beautiful. And our power brick. Is this a dual? Oh, this is the dual power adapter. So we have two USB-C ports on here so you can charge your computer and maybe charge your phone at the same time. This is a nice little compact brick. It is a new option available when you configure your computer. That's a 35 watt charger actually. That's it. That's all that's in there. Okay. Now let's get to the good stuff. The MacBook. First time opening it up. Wow. Fresh and clean. Look at that beauty. Now that we're all set up, obviously this is a very beautiful looking machine. I mean, the design alone has people wanting to upgrade, even M1 users. But honestly, if you're just looking at M1 to M2 for the chip alone, that should not be your sole reason to upgrade. Even though there are some performance improvements, especially with efficiency, this machine will give you up to 18 hours of battery life. So really, if you're coming from anything before M1, like any Intel-based machine, then this upgrade is a no-brainer because you will see a tremendous difference. Now, I'm not someone who gets too deep into benchmarks, but for those of you who are interested as a baseline, here's how the last three generations of MacBook Airs stack up side by side. Specifically, this is on the CPU side of things, and you can see there's a pretty significant difference from Intel to now. And even though there isn't a huge jump from M1 to M2 when it comes to CPU performance, if we're talking graphics, it's a pretty big jump there, and even more so if we look at Intel to now. The other thing to keep in mind with M2 beyond CPU and GPU performance is that there's so much more to it than that. There's media engines and accelerators, and more specifically, ProRes acceleration. So if you work with ProRes video a lot, this is huge. Before this, it was only available on M1 Pro and M1 Max, and obviously M1 Ultra as well, but that's a desktop, so to get this in a MacBook Air is kind of a big deal. Now, arguably, the biggest change here is the display. It's bigger at 13.6 inches now. It has a notch, which is very similar looking to the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro looks wise. It's not XDR, but it is 500 nits now, which is a first for any MacBook Air. It packs P3 color, and with the notch, we get a better 1080p webcam now for FaceTime and video calls. So overall, it's bigger, it's brighter, and even though this is an Air, the display feels a lot more pro. Recording on both MacBooks. We're doing a little webcam test because the new M2 MacBook Air now has a 1080p webcam, which is a step up from the 720 on the M1 MacBook Air. So I want to see directly see how much better it has gotten. And just by looking side by side, I can definitely see a difference, especially with this area over here. So on the M1 MacBook Air, there's just a little bit of overexposing going on, especially back there, that's just fully overexposed. But overall, this shot looks brighter, it looks like it's having a harder time with the bright areas for sure, and things are looking a little fuzzy, not too crisp on here. 
On the M2 MacBook Air though, even though we still have some overexposing going on, it's doing a better job at controlling those bright areas. You could kind of make out that there's some type of greenery tree going on back there. And overall, everything just looks more sharp. Even though there's so many external video cams and webcams out there, it's nice to have something that does a great job on your device. And this webcam is definitely looking a lot better this time around with the M2 MacBook Air. Now, surprisingly, the introduction of MagSafe to the MacBook Air is a solid reason in itself to look at this machine. Not for the reasons you would think though, because even though MagSafe is great, it's nice to not trip over your cable. Also, the included braided cable is nice. But more importantly, it frees up an extra port while you're charging. With the M1 MacBook Air and Pro, those only charge through USB-C. So when you were charging, you only had access to one other port. But with this, even though you still can charge through the Thunderbolt ports, it's nice to have a dedicated option where while you're charging, you still have access to both those ports. Now, something really interesting here is that not only are there improvements to the speakers, but they're also built within. So it's kind of trippy because there's no visible speaker grills. It's all built underneath the keys. And before I compare it directly to the M1 MacBook Air, I just want to just try them out and see what they sound like. So. Let's put some music. Right about halfway here. That's full blast. It's pretty crazy. It's just blasting from the computer. Just took a listen to both. I think the biggest thing that stands out to me, even though they both sound great, like both carry great speakers here, the M2 MacBook Air does a better job at, you know, the louder volumes. Like if you go max, you can still separate things clear. Whereas on the M1 MacBook Air, it kind of gets a little more difficult to do that. Like there's certain things that kind of get muffled. The M2 MacBook Air just has a more balanced sound overall. So it's been about a week with the M2 MacBook Air and after using it, it has definitely solidified those initial thoughts. For most people, this is gonna be the one to get over that 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro that was released alongside it. If you're coming from M1, probably not a super necessary upgrade, but if you're coming from anything older or maybe you were considering the M1 MacBook Air and didn't jump on it, then this is the one for you. I will say I still really do love the midnight finish. I think it looks spectacular, but it does seem to be the most prone to smudges out of all the colors because every little thing will show up on the top. So if you're choosing midnight, definitely keep that in mind and know that you will be actively wiping this thing down. That aside, my whole experience has been a great one. It truly is impressive how much power they pack in something that's so thin and light without a fan. For reference, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is 4.7 pounds, the 14 inch is 3.5, and this one is just 2.7. And as a 14 inch MacBook Pro user, I can absolutely feel that difference, especially because they're a very similar form factor, but the new MacBook Air is just so much thinner. I will most definitely be using this a lot more. So if you guys wanna see anything specifically covered, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hasta luego.